Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. As an animation fan, leaks are the bane of my existence. Not only is it just incredibly disrespectful to the cast and crew, but it can also actively ruin your enjoyment of watching something as it unfolds. I can also complain about the bomb format they've been using to drop new episodes of every show, but that's a discussion for another day. And when leaks do the Steven Universe fusion dance with shipping culture, you get a fair amount of people deciding that they hate a new character months before they even debut. Oh, by the way, this video will contain spoilers for season two of The Ghost of Molly McGee. Wow, what an ending! What? Scratch! Spoilers! When The Ghost of Molly McGee first premiered, really the only romantic relationships to speak of were with the adult characters. Molly's parents, Miss Roop never shutting up about her wife, which is adorable, and of course, Patty and Bobby Daniels. But in that episode, we do get a bit of a hint that Molly will indeed get a love interest. Hey, just quick thing. If you ever sabotage my love life, you're going to find yourself in the after afterlife, okay? Yep, message received. Now, Molly not having a love interest in season one didn't stop shipping from happening. Because it's the internet. Fans are going to ship characters regardless of if it's actually in the show. And seeing as prior to season two, the show didn't really have any boys around Molly's age that were actually developed characters. How about Jeremy? Jeremy spits when he talks and laughs like a seal. I know, he's perfect! It's not surprising that the fans shipped her with Libby and Andrea. I personally shipped her with Libby because their friendship is already so strong and so close, and the two of them really do bring the best out of each other. And of course, I'm not the only one who had this thought. But I also shipped Molly with Libby. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I was like, oh, they're so cute! Like, they are, like, yes! And then I remembered, like, oh yeah, I play all Oh yeah! <laughs> you played the love interest? <laughs> <laughs> and as Andrea became more developed, it was easy to see why people would ship Molly with Andrea. And I forget if it was Bill or Bob who said this, but one of them said, you can ship whoever you want, as long as it's appropriate, just don't expect it to happen. Because while season one was airing, they were already hard at work on season two. Which is where Ollie Chen comes in. Ollie moves into the house across the street from the McGee's with his family. The McGee's roll out the welcome wagon, and the two families hit it off immediately. Pete and Reuben bond over dad stuff, Sharon and Esther bond over spicy food, Daryl thinks that June is pretty much the coolest person he's ever met, and Molly ends up developing a big old crush on Ollie pretty much instantly. As the episode continues on, the two of them continue to bond over how much they have in common. They both love community service and want to make the world a better place. But then, of course, Molly finds out that the Chens are ghost hunters and pose a massive danger to Scratch as a result. Ghost huggers? Scratch, ghost hunters! I, oh, well, that's even worse! In the next episode, the next time we see Ollie, he's in full ghost hunting mode at the bookstore as Libby's been left in charge, and there's a story sprite threatening to ruin all of the books. Molly's able to get him away from the chaos, and of course, tries to get him to see that ghosts can be good. Which leads to an amazing song, and ultimately, pure frustration at the situation. No, I don't want it. It's too black and white. The world isn't black and white, Ollie! Because the Chens are not bad people at all. But because Reuben got scared by a ghost one time, he's been convinced that all ghosts are bad, and that's the worldview that Ollie and June have been brought up with. They genuinely think they're helping! I'm absolutely going to do a full video diving into the Chens and the subject of prejudice further down the road, but for now, let's focus on Ollie. So while all of that is happening with Molly, the story sprite is devouring books, and Libby and Scratch's attempts to fight it keep making things worse. That is, until Libby realizes that she can use her journal to make the story sprite understand her point of view. Wait a minute. That's it! Story sprites are what they eat! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that journal really is you. Leading to Libby dropping a little pearl of wisdom at the end of the episode. I hate this. I know deep, deep, deep down he's just afraid of what he doesn't understand. Well, this bookstore was completely ruined before the story sprite came to understand me. So... So maybe there's still hope? And that, right there, is the crux of everything going forward. The next time we see Ollie, it's in I Wanna Dance With Some Ollie, where Molly and Ollie are setting up for the school's dance. The two of them very awkwardly agree to a not date, in spite of Scratch's objections, which are, of course, for obvious reasons. 
And then once they actually get to the dance, they keep ending up partaking in all of the romantic cliches of a middle school dance. Well, should we do what we came here to do, which is work, and definitely not partake in all of the romantic cliches of a middle school dance? <laughs> yeah, wouldn't want that. What do you want to get? The entire school starts shipping them, and they end up getting voted Lord and Lady Lemming. And this is where Molly and Scratch have their first real fight. Well, maybe this isn't about Ollie at all. Maybe this is about you, because when you're unhappy, you want everyone else to be unhappy too. Capital W, wow. I know it was just your tween hormones talking. Ew. But I think an apology is in order. I'll wait. <clears throat> Molly chooses to go back and dance with Ollie, while Scratch ends up getting caught in one of the ghost traps Ollie set up around the school. Molly enjoys a sweet moment in slow dancing with Ollie. Yes! Slow dance! Okay, she is way too invested in other people's happiness. Before she realizes that she's made a horrible mistake. No ghost is going to ruin our evening. That's an official Ollie Ooh, did it get hot in here? <laughs> I forgot my, uh, I gotta, gotta go! She rushes outside to find Scratch caught in a ghost trap, and is thankfully able to free him. And at that moment, she vows that she and Ollie, as a couple, are finished. Ollie comes outside and sees this, and, unsurprisingly, has a lot to think about. But he doesn't tell his mom what he saw, opting to figure this out on his own. One thing that Alan was wondering when we were talking about this episode on the podcast we recorded with him was, why did Scratch go to the dance? And I think the clear answer is because he wanted to stop them from dating because that would naturally put him in major danger. But let's ask what if for a moment. What if Scratch hadn't gone and Molly and Ollie had officially become a couple? At least as official as things can be in middle school. Molly would have to be lying to her boyfriend constantly. And we've already seen what happens when she has to lie to someone she cares about. I'm getting stress hives from all the lies. Ah! It would not have been a healthy relationship. The only way the two of them could ever be together is if he actually knew about Scratch and knew that ghosts aren't bad. Which is why this split, it's not really a breakup because they were never really officially together, had to happen. Molly and Ollie spend the next month avoiding each other. But in Frightmares on Main Street, they both volunteer to help out at the 3A Club's House of Horrors for Halloween. Ollie has spent the last month thinking that Scratch has been having some sort of effect on Molly, and he wants to save her from his evil ghost spell or curse or whatever he thinks he's doing to her. Molly's very lame haunted house causes Scratch to invite all of his ghost friends to do some scaring. And things are going great! Until Ollie shows up and witnesses the most amount of ghosts he's ever seen. And this whole discussion that happens once Molly realizes that all of the cards are on the table is just so good. Because at this point, all she can do is try to reason with him. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Ghosts are evil and dangerous. No, 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 no. They're just having a little fun. Everyone likes to be scared on Halloween. And this ultimately escalates into a literal tug of war between the two of them. I thought you were an ingoodifier, but you're... You're an embatifier! <gasps> no, I'm not! Ghosts are the embatifiers! They attacked my dad! Gah, any chance this argument could be a little less painful for me? Oh, one ghost did a bad thing, and now you're gonna take it out on all of them? Yeah, I didn't scare your dad! If it makes you feel any better, I barely did my job scaring anyone! I never talked to a ghost or hung out with a ghost or hugged a ghost! It's like hugging a giant marshmallow who can give you a hug right back! But you've clearly never been hugged by a giant marshmallow, have you, Ollie Chen? Because the fact is, you know nothing about real ghosts! <sighs> Just gonna take these back. Oh, man, they're all stressed out now. But I've been told ghosts are bad my whole life. It has to be true. Listen, us terrible, evil ghosts just raised a ton of money for charity. Some kid's getting a baby cow because of us. Maybe two. I'll admit that doesn't seem like an evil thing to do. I promise, Ollie, ghosts aren't bad. And of course, all hell breaks loose when the Frightmares show up, literally, and she has to appeal to his character and ask him to trust her. Look, Ollie, I can't tell you all ghosts are good. They're like people. Yeah, uh, some are good, some are bad. Others seem grumpy, but are maybe kind of lovable if you give them a chance. I know you can always see the good in people, so I'm asking you to see the good in ghosts. And ultimately, 
while grappling with the idea that everything he's been brought up to believe is wrong, he does trust her. And at the end of the episode, you can tell that him having to hide this from his family is going to be rough. Again, we'll come back to that. But what I really love is that right after that, we've got the unhaunting of Brighton Video. Pete's been tasked with turning an abandoned video store into the town's new community center. The problem? It's haunted. So Molly assembles the team, officially dubbed the Ghost Friends. Yeah, I thought that little bit in Frightmares on Main Street was just a little one-off thing, but no, we get a whole theme song, it's great. <laughs> Bad. Sorry. We find out that the ghost haunting the store is named Blair, and she has some unfinished business. And then the episode takes an interesting turn. Proposal? We leave Blair alone, find another place for the community center. We can't do that, Scratch. Why not? What? This is the only building that can hold a foosball table? But if we leave Blair, she'll never confront the pain of her past. Then what's so wrong with that? Um, everything? Scratch is right. I am? All right. Well, I'm turning a corner on this kid. Leave Blair alone! <gasps> Holly! Let us in! We're trying to help! Blair shouldn't have to confront her past if it makes her feel bad. Go away! Denial, lashing out, bristling at mentions of his past. It's almost like Ollie is haunted by his own unfinished business. What's really great about this episode is that we actually get to see Ollie feel guilty for his prior actions as a ghost hunter, and obviously not wanting to confront that past. It's not like there's anything to feel guilty about. I don't feel bad that I was wrong about everything. I don't feel bad about attacking innocent ghosts. And I don't feel bad that I almost hurt someone you really care about. Or maybe I do feel bad. Really, really bad. You were right, Scratch. I don't deserve to be on the team. Or to do cool poses. <laughs> Molly, you want to fix him, please? You can't change your past, Ollie. But being a good person means doing better in the future. And you're already on your way. So that's where we are right now. But I want to take a step back and look at this whole arc so far. Because by far, the primary criticism people have had regarding Ollie is, oh, he's just boy Molly, but as a ghost hunter, he's not interesting. And if he's not a ghost hunter, he's literally just boy Molly. And after Unhaunting of Brighton Video, I've seen some fans say that even though they never hated Ollie, they're glad that he got more character development and wish he had gotten more earlier. But I completely disagree. I think his character development was handled perfectly, especially when you compare it to Season 1. When Molly first meets Scratch at the beginning of the series, it seems like the two of them are total opposites who couldn't be more different. But they quickly come to find out that they actually have a ton in common. Ollie's relationship with Molly in the first part of season two is the exact inverse of this. When we first meet Ollie in the new paranormal, he and Molly absolutely appear to be very much alike. They have a very similar energy, they finish each other's sentences, that kind of thing. And that's pretty much how we see him in the first three episodes. But that's because we're viewing him from Molly's point of view. Once Molly makes the decision to choose Scratch over Ollie at the end of the dance episode, the rose-tinted crush glasses come off. And that's when we get to see more of Ollie's personality separate from Molly. And I'm actually really glad that the two of them are just going to be staying friends for now. I think it's pretty much a given that we'll see them work their way back towards a romance, but it'll be a different dynamic because they've actually gotten to know each other much more and are way more relaxed being around each other their friendship is going to lead to a much stronger and better relationship. I think Ollie's character development has been done amazingly, and I can't wait to see where the show takes things from here. And my hope is that even if you still prefer another ship, you can understand and appreciate what they're doing with this season. Because ultimately, it's about way more than a middle school crush. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with shipping stuff that isn't canon. Just don't be a jerk about it, alright? And seriously, don't spread leaks or we'll send you to the flow of failed phantoms. Okay.